AMD's Ryzen 8000 series CPUs are here. Well, sort of. As of today, AMD is announcing four Ryzen 8000 series CPUs, although they aren't really 8000 series chips. These are still Zen 4 based, the same as the current 7000 series, but these are the APUs. Technically all Ryzen 7000 series chips are APUs as they all contain an integrated GPU, making AMD's G-Line somewhat irrelevant. That is, until now. AMD is launching the 8700G, 8600G, 8500G and 8300G. The big deal here is that the integrated GPU is a significant step up from what we've had before. The top-end 8700G now gets AMD Radeon 780M graphics, which, at least according to AMD's own benchmark results, should offer over 60 FPS in Cyberpunk on low 1080p, 89 FPS in Hitman 3, 109 FPS in GTA 5, 120 FPS in F1 2022, and 236 FPS in League of Legends on its default settings. That's pretty impressive. AMD hasn't given us all that much info, but here's the main specs for the chips. The 8700G is a, an 8-core, 16-thread part with a boost clock up to 5.1 GHz. The 8600G is a 6-core, 12-thread part, as is the 8500G, although those get 760M and 740M graphics respectively, and the 8300G is a system integrator only chip, meaning you can't buy it off the shelf, you have to buy it from a system integrator, and is a quad-core 8-thread part, so that's the super low-end option. All four chips have a 65 watt TDP though, which is kind of interesting to see. There is one more interesting thing to note with these parts, which is that uh, AMD sneaks it into their sort of CPU table slide at the end, which is that the 8500G and 8300G use some Zen 4C cores as well as the standard Zen 4 cores. Those, I think, are generally lower cache variants, which means the dies are often much smaller, which should help AMD in manufacturing these chips, as the ever-precious wafer space that TSMC is always limited and kind of expensive. I'll be interested to see if that means that we'll see two dies under these chips, or if they have custom designed these dies just for these chips. One final thing I want to mention about these APUs is this slide here. AMD claims that you get you can get 61 FPS average in Starfield with the 8700G, a frankly amazing feat, until you notice that they've included the fluid motion frames in the count, which essentially doubles your frame rate with sort of fake generated frames. Equally, the graph here isn't scaled to zero, 32 FPS is a third of 61 FPS? This is the sort of deceptive tactics that you need to be aware of when looking at manufacturer provided data. I just thought I'd mention that. Sticking with the APU theme, I want to briefly mention the results that AMD highlights at the start of their presentation, where they compare their newest mobile chip, the 8840U, with the same 780M graphics that the 8700G is getting, to Intel's Core Ultra 7 155H with Arc graphics. This is especially poignant considering the leaks that MSI's upcoming Claw handheld will use that Core Ultra 7 chip. And at least according to AMD, you can expect up to 60% more performance from AMD's solution. Again, we'll have to see some independent tests, and this likely doesn't take into account TDP and thermal constraints that you would find in a handheld, but I did find it rather interesting. And lastly, on the CPU front, we have... Uh, we have deja vu. AMD, and I cannot believe that I'm saying this, in January 2024, is launching multiple new Ryzen 5000 series chips. Look, see, this says CES 2024 and new AMD Ryzen 5000 series processors for AM4. I'm not dreaming, right? Right? The first new chip is the 5700X3D. I have to assume that this is the Reject 5800X3D dies, 
but I thought those went into the US only 5600X 3D that they sold to Micro Center last year, so I have no idea what they, where these dies are coming from. At least they include pricing for this one at $249, which they compare to the 13600K using an RTX 4080 at 1080p on high settings and show up to 13% more performance. Although interestingly, they only seem to have benchmarked equally old titles. COD Modern Warfare, not Modern Warfare 2 or 3, Watch Dogs Legion, Shadow, Eye of the Tomb Raider, and Control. That's really, really weird. Anyway, we also get a 5700 with an included CPU cooler, a 5600 GT, basically an upgraded GPU on the 5600G, and the same for the 5500 GT. Here's uh, the list of all of the chips that AMD seems to make or support right now. Feel free to pause if you want to peruse the list in your own time. For me though, it's time to move on to the new GPU, and that would be this, the RX 7600 XT. AMD makes a pretty big stink about this being a 16 gig card, and I'd argue quite rightfully. VRM was one of the hottest topics of discussion in the PC space last year, and it's hard to argue that Nvidia specifically hasn't been particularly stingy with the VRAM, at least in quantity recently. Cards have gone backwards in how much VRAM they have, like the 3060 getting 12 gig of VRAM, but the 4060 only getting 8 gig. So AMD is hitting hard here with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 available. As for the course performance, AMD claims that's a moderate step up at 1440p from this, the 7600, and they're really pushing the idea that this is the perfect upgrade from an RTX 2060. Considering the 2060 is still used by 3.7% of the entire Steam user base, that's one hell of a market to be selling to. AMD also compares this to the 4060, with what ends up being a pretty complicated chart to understand as they include raw performance, upsampling performance, and frame generation performance all at once. The long and short of it is that the 7600 XT and 4060 should be pretty matched in terms of raw performance, and if you want the fluid motion frames enabled, you can double that frame rate seemingly regardless of if the game supports frame generation like in, uh, Nvidia's DLSS frame generation or not. They also mention that the built-in video encoder got an upgrade too both for H.264 and H.265, and actually AV1 as well. You can also get your uh, streamed or recorded video upscaled too, which can help improve the quality of your recorded clips, which is pretty nice. AMD also makes clear that the extra VRAM means all of the generative AI tools that in theory should work on the AMD GPUs will work an awful lot better thanks to that extra VRAM. I can confirm that 8GB of VRM is not enough for 13 billion parameter large language models, although I'm yet to use any of the Premiere Pro AI tools, and honestly I'm not entirely sure what would make me actually use them, but there you go. The 7600 XT will be available on the 24th of January at $329, which is a tiny bit higher than the 4060, but a pretty close match overall. So that's about it for AMD CES announcements. I'm most interested in seeing how the 7600 XT performs, although I'd admit that the 8700G does look like a rather promising chip for budget constrained builders. While the 1650 isn't exactly an amazing performer and a great target to be hitting, the fact that a CPU can offer that level of performance on its own is mighty impressive, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it actually stacks up in the real world. Why AMD is launching new chips for a soon to be two generation old platform, I have no idea, but if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Maybe we can all work it out together. Of course, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one or more tech reviews or anything else, feel free to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon and check out plenty of other videos that will be listed on the end cards. Hopefully, if they're not already popped up, they will be soon. 
You can also support the channel using the links in the description. You can pick up my open source latency or response time testing tools uh, at osrtt.com. You can pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one or a load of other designs that I also made myself or a load of other affiliate links to places like Amazon and Overclock UK if you happen to be buying from there. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video.